So Max and I are answering the question, do toxicity levels change as you move further downstream in a river, especially um, in a big river near industrial centers like the Passaic River? Um, we plan to do a bioassay test to try and quantify the level of toxicity in water. A bioassay uses a biological organism to test for chemical toxicity in water, and in this case we are using daphnia, which are tiny freshwater crustaceans, um, often called water fleas. In our research, we will also try and find the LD50, which is the lethal dose of toxicity, which causes death to 50% of a group of organisms. This research is significant because it is both important and interesting to know if the water we drink, swim in, and interact with on a daily basis is toxic enough to be killing off these Daphnia organisms. We'll use Daphnia because they're sensitive to changes in water chemistry, and we'll gather samples of water from different places and place the organisms into the water with food for a certain amount of time. Um, to see if the Daphnia will die, and if they do, then that means that the toxicity levels in the water are high. Um, the food that we will feed the Daphnia is yeast, and it's important to put the yeast in with the Daphnia and the water, because then we'll know that the organisms aren't dying due to starvation. The independent variable in this research is the location of the water samples. So for example, the beginning of a stream versus the end of a stream or a freshwater spring and things like that. Um, the dependent variable in this research um, is the toxicity levels. And the control group that we'll use is water from a Poland Springs bottle, for example, because we know that this water is non-toxic. Before we use the Daphne in research, they must be stored in about 20 degrees Celsius and the culture morality must not exceed 10% for 14 days prior to testing. Um, in addition, we have to make a baseline graph with toxic water to determine the LD50, which is what we will use to compare the rest of our results to. And to make this baseline, we will use um, glyphosate 4 plus herbicide as our toxin. Um, glyphosate is a pollutant that is found in the Passaic River, which is one of the rivers that we are testing. And um, it's under scrutiny for being a possible carcinogen, but it has not yet been removed from the market and continues to be the most used herbicide. So we have to take samples from several different water sources. So we'll be taking samples um, from the Passaic River. We'll be taking samples from the stream behind the school, both at the beginning and the end of it, um, as well as the water pump up at the turf at school and some other locations as well. The pH of the test solutions that we use must be between 6.8 and 8.5. And um, after everything's set up, we'll take the prepped Daphnia and place them in the water solutions with the food and wait approximately 24 hours and then count how many Daphnia are um, immobilized or dead. And we'll be able to just tell with the naked eye because they are large enough to be seen without a microscope. Um, in terms of budget, we need live Daphnia, which is $15 per culture, and um, we're going to need two of these just in case uh, one culture dies. Um, we also need uh, yeast for the Daphnia, which is its food source, and that's only about $5. And then we also need the glyphosate 4 plus herbicide, which is $50. So we're giving ourselves about a hundred dollar budget um, for some leniency in case something goes wrong or we need something else.